for this. this is the discussion with Snoopy, by the way. This is not my opinion, so don't, don't listen to what the hell I say. Uh, Evelyn, Kazix, and Jace have been banned out. Nunu Twisted Fate. Lysandra is available. Will they use it as their final ban, or will it get through? Gambit are on the last decision, and there's discussions about it. It is going to be Thresh. Huh. That means Lysandra is available. Will they use it as a first pick, though? I would doubt it. I think they're going to let it through and see. Gambit, do you want to use it? I think with Nunu banned out, it does mean that Shen is available. And of course, Kurt will take that. Yeah, they, they gave him the whole, you're going to choose Shen or you're going to choose Lissandra here. So yeah. maybe Gambit would actually pick him up because Darren, the very strong Shen player, has been playing it quite a bit, played it last week. I was just about to say, Darren played Lissandra last week as well. Oh yeah, he did. Mm. I, I totally forgot about that, I'm sorry. But yeah, him and Soaz both played it in, the, in, the, in their own solo laners. So maybe they are going to lock this one in. And you would think if Pharrell and Lord's been playing Lissandra this much, has been playing so well that he knows exactly what to play against her. Well, he had Oriana before as well, remember, and still managed to land about four-man shockwaves. Those 3,000 ELO shockwaves, they're scary things. It looks like Dark has been talked into pulling <laughs> Sona out, though. I don't, I don't know whether it supports like playing Sona or not, but nevertheless, she's just so always strong. See Gambit. She's so strong. That crescendo is just... Wow! Killed. Look at that. Boom! Instant. Do it. Instant do lock. it. Do it. Uh, one one time, I swear. They're gonna, they're gonna lock on Tino. Oh, that's gonna be creates on the yeah. yeah. I was thinking, jungle as, jungle as, Aaron is gonna come up. Pull out jungle as. people to do it. No, not gonna happen. Um, but I, one time, I hope that they're gonna hover over Timo and then accidentally click lock in, and then they're like, oh. Uh oh. And then can they'll we, win can the we game. Remake? Can we remake? No. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh no, my computer just crashed. Alt F4. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I think that will be uh, definitely creating on uh, Ezreal. And so far. I'm a little bit surprised that they actually decided to pick their AD carry over their support first. Since they already know exactly what Gambit's using for support, but it looks like they don't want to let Genja possibly pick Ezreal mm. up, which we have seen him play, I believe it was a total of once. Well, um, yeah, and he went for Varus all, four times, so chances are he's probably going to pick Varus right here. And that makes me think, depending on the support that... It's uh, the jungler then, which... Hmm, Shinzo. Okay. It makes me think that, depending if they do go for Varus, will Alternate go for a lane swap? Do they want Crete and Jerry to go up against that Sona Varus lane, which has so much poke? Obviously, assuming they do go with Varus, but Genja Whoa. going back to his roots. Going back old school into Moscow five days. In fact, it was before that. Yeah. yeah that's, that's how he uh, climbed solo queue. It was actually was it revive, teleport Ash or something like that. I've gone a blank. I've, got, I've drawn a blank. I can't remember the damn name of the team. What Empire. were they? Empire. They did an Empire. God, I, I was just like... <laughs> it's the heat. Don't worry. I was confused. I was confused. I was just like, that's how did I forget this? I think that's going to be a gif right there. Well, your mouth just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we do have Nami being locked in, and we do have Hecarim. So Arne, going to go back to that horse. It was quite amazing, uh, as we saw during DreamHack. And then the Nami, which I'm still not 100% like convinced of. I am. I, every time I've seen Nami, he's done fantastically well. Just did fantastically well in the last game well. As well, NIP Fnatic. That, that's like what I look at. Well... NIP are not playing the best right now. That's, that's <laughs> that is the, true. They are not the best right now. That's the cleanest way I can say that Deficio didn't do too good on Nami. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean... Pretty sure thing, we're not going to get Warwick, by the way. One thing they do have, though, that actually fits really well with Nami is the whole Ash initiate. She has the best initiate in the game, hands down. So if she does get an arrow off, the Nami uh, wave, not to mention the Aqua Prison, mm -hmm. can completely get you out of that. So you're not too worried in the end from it. But Darker, he's still hovering over that, that Warwick. Okay, that, that, that seems a little bit better. Carthus, okay. This will be the mid lane, of course. It will put Lissandra up against Kerb. Or will it? Will they go for the lane swap? The the lane of Ezreal and Nami is pretty okay. strong. Wow. They're switching that it means to, Alex is going to be on Lissandra. Indeed, it does mean Alex will be on Lissandra now. Now I'm excited. I was excited before, guys, but now I'm really excited. <laughs> we, we have the all-star AP middle of Europe, and we have the highest ELO king, guy, man, bear pig in the world going head-to-head -head against you. How can you not have a good game? Well, we'll see whether they switch or not first. There it is. Yeah, I think that's how it's going to change. I don't think they're going to switch around anymore. We also have Aaron Air, the jungle man that's really been pouring himself about lately. We'll see how those ganks work. Diamond Prox, of course, playing Shin Zhao, is not really a counter to anything they have there. I'm, I'm going to see him going in and Shadow Dash is going straight across him. One thing that I'm worried about is the whole, the BDS. You, you and Trevor got the ball delivery system, I shortened it to BDS where it's easier to say for me. The whole BDS for them. So they have Shen to potentially do it. They have the horse, which you cannot stop. Like, he yeah. will ult into you and the ball's going to get there no matter what. So it depends on how well he's going to place the ball down, but that is a strong combo to go up against. Hecarim can do a lot of damage. Shen can uh, do some, some pretty decent damage. But how do you stop that? The Zin doesn't really counter that in terms of you're not a team that wants to fight an AoE, like a cannon kind of thing. 
Absolutely, we can see the crowd there. Pretty sure I know what they're cheering for. Don't think, unfortunately, it's for alternate. Pretty sure Gambit are definitely going to be the house favorites here. I feel bad for the one guy in the audience right now that's cheering for alternate. Well, surrounded, by, <laughs> surrounded by Gambit members or Gambit fans. The one and only manager that's in there. He'll be the only guy with an alternate shirt, and they'll all be staring at him. <laughs> oh man! But this is going to be this is going to be an exci a very exciting game. We have alternate defending their undefeated title right now against Gambit, who is, is actually the highest um, in, or is the highest standing in summer LCS out of all the previous teams. Well, can they be the one and only team to have that perfect score so far? Of course, we saw Cloud9 going up against Counter Logic Gaming last night, and they did take their first defeat, went 5-1. and one. It does also mean that, well, Alton, actually, I tell a lie, I don't know what they went in the end, but he went 5-1 and one at the time. More importantly, it's alternate. Can they go 6-0? and oh? Or what are you looking at? Something's quizzically something caught you that on Gambit really here. threw me off. Darian has 8% armor pen and 8 flat magic pen. Okay. He's Elise. I know. <laughs> That's <laughs> really confusing me right now. Why, we, maybe I wonder if he's picked these wrong runes. I, it's happened before. It, it really has. I mean, we've had people well, you've had not, pick not pick runes as yeah. well. But I mean, it's even happened in EU LCS before. But that seriously really worries me is that if... Unless he's going like AD Elise, which... <laughs> Has never happened before yeah. in LCS? Oh man, that horse. Oh, that's like a horse, Jay that's a fish. Jay Ree, the fish. Loving it, but they're not even going for it. The rest of Alternate were sat ready and waiting for Invade, but Gambit not looking for it. In fact, they're not looking to Invade at all. They're in full passive mode, so they want to stay well away from any fights. You know, one thing I'm really, uh, really, really interested to see is how well Alex does on Lissandra, because he plays these like assassin-heavy AP middles, in my opinion, or just assassin-heavy middles um, overall with, you know, Kha'Zix, with Zed. Um, and Lissandra, you know, once he picked up the Yi, I, I said it really wasn't up his alley, but Lissandra is totally up his alley, and I want to see how well he's going to pull something off. But as you said before, there's no invades coming out, and we do have lane swaps coming. So we're going to have, it looks like, yes, so we're going to have Genja and Darker in the top lane. And we're going to have uh, Jerry and Cretan down at the bottom. Well, we'll see where it works out for them. And honestly, okay, so if they're going to be switching like this, which is Gambit that's forcing the switch, whether that's the case of they don't want to be in the 2v2 lane or they want to pick yeah. out Kerb. I, well, I, I think it's the first one, actually. Because, oh, well, I mean, because you're on the blue side, so you have the double gold advantage. This is still 3.7 to keep in mind, guys. We are not on 3.8 like North America is. But they don't want to go up against an Ezreal Nami lane where Ash will. Well, Ash doesn't win that, let's just say. She doesn't really yeah. win any lanes at uh, 2v2 anymore, so she's going to force him into a 1v, uh, 1v2. Well, we'll see how it works out. Ignite being used on creates on there. Darian wants to get out straight down. So simply just to get the ability power on him, I'm not too sure what yeah. to scare so him out there. That's, that's also weird. That, that makes me think he definitely has wrong runes, considering he only has 5 AP now because of the Ignite Mastery. <laughs> so that really worried me, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if anyone's to make this something like this work, it's definitely him. Well, we'll see about that. Of course, he did start off with the flask, so he's going to be chugging down their pots. They knew exactly what they were up against. And we do see Aaron Air taking down that blue buff. He's now double buffed up. We'll see whether he goes towards the top. I don't think there's really any ganks on there. It may simply be a case of just to clear out that little bit of farm for Kerp. Remember, Kerp, he got dived three on one by Evil Geniuses. Backfired horribly on them, so I'm not too sure whether Diamond Prox is going to be doing the same sort of thing. We do see Kerp, of course, just defending off this wave. Aaron Air is still lingering, but I don't really think there's anything to go for. The mid lane is probably where the action's about to happen. Yeah, that's just weird considering they have a ward covering that spot anyways, and they know exactly where Diamond is, but it looks like Aaron Air will back away in the end. Kerp luckily going to be able to pick up all this experience, and we do have actually Engage on the middle. They are going to come around there. He's going to try and dive towards him. Front of the Lord will get caught out. Is it going to be enough? They're going to have three talent strike. He will go down. Diamond Prox picks up the kill, and now Aaron Air is in trouble. You cannot 2v1 them, and now you can see Diamond go back in towards Aaron Air, but more importantly, it was Gambit that got first Blood. And I have to point this out. Alternate, wow, as you hear the crowd from back here, Alternate has only lost out of the entirety of all five games one first objective. And that was against Mutri Makers with first turret. Now they lost first blood against Gambit here for the first time in their LCS career. And this might be like a new Gambit in terms of what we saw from last week, or at least at least on the first day. And there's also powerful stats to back up. If Gambit get first blood, they generally go on to win. We'll see whether it works out for them. That was all about Alexic kicking off there. He's, you're looking at me quizzical. I know these things. Okay, I, I, was, I just try to remember back to my, my, my notes. You're, you're trying true. to think back to your own little database, aren't you? That's what you're trying to do. Don't question me on this. <laughs> trust me. Never question Just me. trust me. Darker, though, getting the poke onto Kerp and forcing him away from this one. Aranea was trying to 
pick up anything he could from that. The race was all he could go for. He's going to have to go back to buy Spirit Stone, already been picked up by Diamond. Oh, I guess Aaron is probably going to do the same. Stand the path between them. There it is, of course, picked it up. So, we did see an interesting pickup last time with the Spirit Stone. Oh, actually, double Doran's Blade been picked up by Alex Itch at Doran's Ring. Doran's Blade. Now, that would be interesting. Maybe Lissandra. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing about Lissandra is with her passive, uh, it's after a certain amount of time, um, you will have a free cast, free spell cast. So as long as you're last hitting, as long as you build that little bit of extra health, considering you have to get in their face since you're a medium range caster, it helps you out uh, overall with that instead of just going towards like a chalice or, you know, going towards a tier. We're going to see a dive and reward placement coming out from Diamond in this mid lane. He's still sticking around, hasn't gone with the ward placement on red yet. We're at the five minute mark, so I wasn't sure whether he was going to try and Mark that one out. Maybe they've decided Frenlord is the target they want to get on. That volley coming out on Kerp. RNA comes up simply to protect and help out clearing that wave. Just to prevent any potential ganks coming out from Diamond Prox. It does, of course, mean he's going to back away. Ward's being placed in the river as well. They are still getting Diamond Prox up here. He doesn't care that there's two there. Yeah, but look how low RNA is from just sticking around. He's actually... Oh, he's not going to spot him here. Diamond does see him. If Kurt backs, this is going to be a dive. This is absolutely, and you can see he's going to go. And now Aaron here puts that ward down. Is it going to be too little, too late? No, three talent strike on him. He can't quite get the second hit. The audacious charge was already used, and he just trots off laughing. <laughs> he may have been laughing. I wasn't. I was just, you know, quoting on that one. I didn't see it. I can't see a big grin. He's just in the distance on that screen in the corner there. But they always come back. What on earth are you doing, Aaron here? Well, he, he thinks he's amazing because he is a horse, but <laughs> I mean, still in the meantime, Gambit was able to deny at least a full wave over to Alternate. Looks like they're going to take the turret here, so not going to deny anything else. He's coming back again. <laughs> he's going to go Wolves instead. Kerb is going to come in just at the end as Genja takes down that first turret. So now, with that turret down, you're going to have a stat for me, aren't you? Oh, well, just that... Uh, no, but no, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I had to look over my, my notebook. Um, so Gambit actually on average, including Spring LCS, got first turret at 10 minutes and 57 seconds. That's why I looked at you like a little weird, because it's so it's relatively late to take a, a first uh, turret. But well, this is the first team to ever take first turret and first blood against alternate. Thank you. There we go. That's the one I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had the stat in you somewhere. I didn't want to steal your thunder or anything. So the moment gold is, of course, 1.4k to Gambit. That was first blood and first turret already picked up. Diamond Prox being the initiator on both of those so far. Alex is getting that farm going in that mid lane. And look at the difference. 53 CS to 38. Bilgewater Cut is just being picked up by Creaton. That's his first item. So he's going Blade of the Rune King. First item on Ezreal. We'll see how that works out for him. Genji, meanwhile, has rotated around along with Darko. Now they're going in towards the bottom lane and now pushing on towards the Dragon while Alex takes down the blue. This is pretty ballsy play from Gambit. Yeah, they're going to have to back away from this, definitely. It's already down to half health here, but as you see, it is healing up already and the rest of the members of Gambit are there, though. Kerp is level 6, so he could come down for this fight. However, right now, Cretan and Jerry are not there. Well, we'll see whether Aaron A can get in. That volley shot keeps going off. This time, Genji is going to be using it. The ball delivery system is available. They're not going to go for it, though. Dragon picked up by Gambit and secured as they force everyone away. And if you look at what Gambit's doing right now to alternate, it's something no team's ever done. It's met their aggression level and surpassed it even further, and that is Gambit. They're, they're just so aggressive overall, but they've managed to make it even more aggressive. I can't think of what I'm looking for. Well, actually, you know, it's funny you should mention that because that was exactly how we talked about how you had to be Gambit all those months ago when right. they first broke into the scene. In fact, two years ago now, effectively, it was they had you had to match them for aggression. And it was very hard because they're a team that was just so good at it. As it stands, though, Tear of the Goddess. Blue oh. Ash coming out here for Genja. And now Kraton's actually going aggressive on Darko. One more shot will do it. He flashes away, but that's going to be the flash for Kraton. Use the barrier as well. Picks up the kill. Oh, Darker, he went back because he wanted to ignite Cretan just to scare him away and just for Genji to possibly be able to pick up that kill. But And then he does go down. He gives over uh, first death to alternate, first kill for alternate, and oh. Brown Lord going low. Brown Lord's going to go low here, but he can see the ball delivery. Is it going to come in? The shockwave wasn't enough. Kerb had to simply use Stan United to protect for Brown Lord and force him away. It does mean for Brown Lord will pick up that blue buff, but aggression from Alex Itch all across the map. Oh, Gambit really trying to push it to alternate. And I'm, st I'm looking back at this tier right now that just keeps stacking on the scoreboard for Genja, and I'm just... I'm out of lots of words, to be honest. I mean, we haven't seen Blue build on any other champions just yet. I, I, I do know about Blue Ash, though. You do know about yeah, Blue Ash? I do Can know about Blue Ash from Internal of Riot, because they're, they're, they have been saying Blue Ash is strong, so I Can really... Can you this? No, but, I'm not going to lie to you, because I, I don't really know a great deal about oh, it. Okay. I just know that it's definitely a legit build. So we'll see how well it works. Certainly, Genja, he's one of the people he was using Triple Dawn's play. Didn't quite work out for him last week, but we'll see how Blue Ash works. The thing is, like... 
how do you get past a volley, like volley spam out of, out of an ash? So you have the mana to obviously work for it. If you go for some cooldown reduction with the Iceborne Gauntlets, which you don't necessarily need since she has a soul, but... Exactly, that is the point. It's similar to Blue Ezreal, but you don't need the Gauntlets. It saves you, an item, see, you get I'm more curious. damage in it. Do you go for a CDR item still, though, to volley spam, or do you just depend on your amount of mana? Well, we'll see exactly how Genji wants to build it, because he's the pro gamer and not me. True. <laughs> Simply put. We are going to see a potential gank in this top lane. Kerp does actually use the Shadow Dash across there, and you can see the Audacious Charge comes out. Diamond is going to dive towards this one. There's no turret, remember. Darian's going to dive in. Six that bangs in, and that's another kill for Gavin. And, and that honestly confuses me that Kerp was that far out. And no offense to Darian, but that's typically what we see him do, just push out with no words. But now Dark getting very low on the bottom lane. And there's going to be the Aqua Prison. That will be the end of Dark. Is he going to be able to turn this one back around? The exhaust goes on towards Genja. And well, I think J Re wanted another kill there. That was actually a perfect exhaust out of him because Genja could have picked up the kill on a Crete, I'm, I'm pretty sure. If he just were to chase him down, he could have sustained against the damage of Jay Reese. So great job by them. And now we're all tied up two to two here. And you look at Gambit, they have such a huge goal lead already because of that dragon, because of the first blood, and also because they're farming quite well. And the big difference here is the fact that Diamond and Darian are beating out that top lane. Kerbs normally miss the dependent in that top lane. It's actually forcing the rest of Alternate to come across and counter because normally it's uh, Aaron here. He's dashing around the map, speeding around, which is why he's got this horse, so he can get in and create those kills early on. Instead, he's having to play defensive. And look at the damage coming out from Alex Hitch there. Just one combo on towards him nearly dropped half his hit points. He said, look at the damage. I looked at his items. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> he only yeah. has the Negatron cloak right now and two uh, Dorange Rings and the Sword Boots. But yeah, so much damage coming out of him. And he's only going to get stronger as the game goes on here. And the problem is, is that if Gambit, if Alex does go into the back line, does lock down Pharrell Nord, which to me is the person they're going to go for, and you have Diamond go in as well and separate them with his ultimate, they can kill Pharrell Nord before he's able to do anything, before anyone's able to save him. Well, we've just seen a very strong elite from Soaz earlier on, and Darian looking to match that. We are going to see a potential gank coming in here as you see the horse coming, charging through, and that was a great escape there. Is it going to be enough, though? The fear goes off, but he's not really got anyone with him. Kerp is not close enough, and in comes Diamondprox. They're going to try and turn this one around. Darian comes back in there. True Shot Barrage rattles past from Creaton, and that forces everyone to back away. I am so confused right now at Gambit's playstyle because this is... If I'm not mistaken, this has never really happened in terms of Diamond always countering stuff that comes over at uh, Darian. But we do see Pharrell getting low again. Again, they dive on towards it, but he manages to pull the Shockwave off, gets the defensive ball. There comes Kerb. Last stand is enough. Can he get on towards Alexich? The split targets. They don't really know where to go here. It is going to be Alexich to go into one, but they turn it back around. Kerb gets the kill. Now it's a one on one. Top laner versus jungle. Darker is going to come in, though. He's going to have to try and avoid them. He doesn't have He's mana. Can he get in towards it? Aaron is going to come in. He's going to protect them, force them away. A little poke from Darker there, tries to slow him down, but Kerb doesn't manage to escape. Both mid laners go down. It seems like it seems like Diamond's playing on another level right now. I was trying to mention earlier that usually Darian's the one that overextends, he gets caught, and Gambit makes plays off of that. They take a turret, they take a dragon, they take whatever they try or whatever they can. But right now, he's like, Yeah, I know you're gonna go for Darian. I'm gonna be there waiting and turn it around on you every time, or at least create kills for that. And it's working out so well as Cretan's gauging a little bit onto Genja. And Genja, he does actually, in terms of his items, he does have a BF sword now. And that bottom turret will go down for alternate. Good job of trying to die as many minions as possible. Yeah, trying to keep down as many minions, keep them away from Genji, which is why Creaton wasn't finishing off that turret. Diamond, though, is starting to look towards coming down towards his bottom lane. Genji and Dark are also there. So if Creaton continues to push, Blue Buff's going to get started off. Are they actually going to go for this one? Are they going to give it Alex Hitch? Or are they going to give it Genji, which I feel they may be doing here? No, it is going to be Alex Hitch's. They're going to have to stick around for this one. Diamond's going to have to start running around in a couple of circles. Like, Alex, come on, man. Come and get this blue buff. And, and speaking of sticking around, they need to push that top or bottom wave out really quickly because Dragon's coming up in about 10 seconds here if they want to go for that before anyone else has a chance. In the meantime, though, Kerp's actually ditched top lane, it looks like. And he might be heading down to middle to go for an aggressive push here or at least prepare for Dragon. Yeah, they're definitely getting in position. Dragon is up, like you mentioned. And we do also see Kerp actually there, dodging back and forward. And they pinged it. This is going to be a five-man fight. Who is likely to come out on top? I have to give that over to Gambit, to be honest. I mean, because of the control they have in these fights, they should be able to lock someone down and blow them up before there's anything they can do about it. Because of that Ash Arrow initiate followed up by Alex. But Alex is missing his ultimate as it just comes up. And we might see that engage happen. They may well see him. Can they get on towards there? It's all about the shockwave, all about them. Cocoons being poked from the side there. And don't forget that crescendo. The way the alternate 
a group top right now. I would not be surprised to see Darko flashing in, trying to get that crescendo down. Jayree getting caught, but a little bit of poke there. It's actually Darian he went to. He's repelled in, and now he's got Jayree right in front of him. Kraton's actually been caught by the crescendo. We'd see Aaron Air getting the fear on towards him. Darko taking down very low. Kraton, Trope getting to keep the poke. He's just off of the side. He takes down oh. one, takes down two with the true shot rush. Kraton gets dived on. He finally goes down. It's Alex Six that picks up the kill, but for Alon, he's still got all the hit points. Tries to get in. Alex Six taking low. Jayree, finish him off, man. He doesn't go for it instead. And now Ferrello's backing away. Genja manages to get the shot across. Comes in there. Is it going to be enough? Ferrello's going to chase on. He's got the slow down. Gets another ball down. He's got no mana. He oh! can't go for it. He turns it back around, but Alex Hitch comes in and finishes off. Wow, incredibly close. I know it went down. And that was a 3 for 2 I believe, overall. Nobody picked the dragon up either. I think we're going to get a repeat performance in a minute. Wow, that fight was just so intense. It lasted so long as well. And just such great micro out of both teams right there. Genja sitting inside that blue cove, just attacking as much as possible so he doesn't get engaged upon. And the whole fight started with Darren engaging onto Jayree. He landed Cocoon, he followed up with some damage, and Cretan popped right into his face. And of course, Arne followed up with some great protection of him. It wasn't enough to save him, but either way, 4-1 and one right now on Ezreal. He's still going toward that, towards that blue build, and Genja hasn't completed an item just yet, but it looks like he might be going for a Bloodthirster, which... And honestly, it would be a little unique on, on Ash, but it would definitely work out. Alex is spotted out there, and again, as I mentioned, we're going to have this dance once again. And that was a very close dance. Kraton actually was the one that got caught. Genja's arrow is available in just a couple of seconds. That may be the initiator. Remember, Crescendo is not up, though. So I think Gambit want to hold this one off for a little while. And it's just, it's getting so tense right now because you know both teams, like, they don't want to let this dragon go for free. They want to make something happen. Jerry's, he's putting down pink wards. He's trying to gain vision here. In the meantime, for all, or not for all, an alternate just in turn just go middle. They're like, forget dragon. We're just going to push him middle and force you to come to us. They're going to try and take some damage on towards that turret. And it was enough. You saw the hawk shot come across there. Diamond Prox is leading the charge. Is it going to be enough, though? No, that ball control again. Just keeping the position, keeping them at bay. Kerper's actually backed off a little bit here. He's simply just going around the bush. And it does look like Alternate have turned the Dragon Dance into a tower push. And what's really different about Gambit right now is the fact that Genja's not off by himself farming. He, he used to do that all the time. He is now. And he was never there. <laughs> <laughs> Just as I mentioned well, that. Because... But he, he never used to do that. He would always be farming bottom lane and let the rest of his team deal with, with the fights. But it looks like he will be interacting a little bit more now. It looks like Dragon is backed off by both teams. And Alternate, they're not going to be able to get this military here, so they're going to back away as well, but... Alternate, they finally have positioning on Dragon. They haven't had it just yet, so they might be able to make a play off this. Yeah, they just pinged on towards Genjo saying, look, he's down here. We're in a 4v1 situation right now. All he can do is simply arrow from downtown. That enchanted arrow. Instead, he now oh, got to be careful. Alex is just simply just going to try and protect him and keep him away here. And actually, Genjo started off the Dragon. There's no vision right now for Alternate, so they're going to have to run by the side to actually check it. Actually, they do have a uh, ward in that bush, but still, Gamb, they got to be careful here. We have all Ultimates coming up very shortly. Actually, all Ultimates are, are available as Alex, he wanted to make something happen. Crescendo is available right now, and this could be another major team fight. And this is all Gambit needed. They just needed to delay for that. Crescendo to be available. Ball on towards Aranea's head. We'll see it's used to deliver in there. They are keeping away from range here. The dragon's still up. You're going to see Aranea going in. He gets the smite down. Is it going to be enough? Will he try and escape from this one? There's going to be a standing United coming out. Now they're going aggressive. Darker gets caught on the oh, shot. Oh, pulls it through them. Can they turn it on the head? Gambit's still going aggressive. He's on to Kratos. Kratos taking very low. Gets popped straight down. Manages to get away from that. Arkin shifted into the pin. He is going to get taken down by Darian. Darian now targeting there. Diamond Prox goes on towards Kip. Kip trying to shadow dash across. Has to fly. In there, but Darian continues to sink the fangs down. Pharrell and Lord is with him. Has he got the defensive ball down? Have they got enough on towards Darian? He just needs to stun him. Yes, he does. And Pharrell and Lord picks up the kill. It's a three for three. And the dragon, more importantly, went to alternate. A three for three. And that was the most micro intensive fight I have seen just yet. You saw Arne. He got into the back without the ball, which was the key point. He got into that dragon. He was able to smite sealed away. And then you just saw that four man 3000 ELO shockwave come in that completely caught Gambit off guard. But you saw the focus off alternate. It wasn't on the right targets. Alex Itch went down, but Gendra wasn't touched. He was allowed to just free, do free damage the entire time. Was able to pick up a kill as well as he's now 2-1-4. and four. And Dragon, I mean, it's finally taken, so we're going to get a breather. We're not going to see Dragon action for another six minutes. But wow, these teams are butting heads like it's like there's no tomorrow. They're absolutely going for it. Bloodthirster being completed. More importantly, we saw Alex go in for Kratan. They know that he's the target they want. They want to try and pop him down, but he can't shift him back into the pit. It was just like... 
damn, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> can't, get, can't keep up with that sneaky little bugger. But instead, he does manage to go down. We do see Alex H. He's going to pick up this blue buff. And I'm wondering what is going to be the next focus target. What I want to point out is that actually Genja landed an arrow onto, onto uh, Cretan, but it looked like there's a little bit of mistiming. Alex, Alex was able to follow up right away. But with that blue buff picked up, we have an Abyssal Scepter now picked up on Alex. So he's going to be relatively tanky here against the damage on Pharrell Lord. But looking at it, I don't know if Pharrell Lord is necessarily the target he has to be worried about. Because he's going to be the one ahead of his team, while Pharrell Lord sends the ball into the back line to group up everyone else. So he pretty much has Alex by himself. I, I talked about that actually in DreamHack, where if you can separate Lissandra from the rest of her team, you can kill her before she is able to do any other major damage. In the meantime, alternate tied 9 to 9 right now, down only 600 gold, are going for this middle turret. Yeah, they're going to push in towards it, they're going to get a good couple of hits in there, it's actually Aaron Air they're going to focus on. Alex H is going to follow it this through, and they're going to use the ultimate, Aaron Air will go down, but the shockwave comes back out! Alex H gets caught out in that one, there goes the wave, finally Aaron Air goes down, Diamond Prox getting taken down very low, he's actually pinned off here, Ferenlo does manage to pop that ball, but look at Genja, he's been plunking away on Kerb all the time, and now Darien goes in, lands the cocoon on Ferenlo, there's going to be the crescendo, he hits three members, and alternate all taken very low from this one, but Ferenlo not done and does it yeah Alex H comes in the tower gets on towards him Diamond Prox dives in towards it Kerb very low as well we did see Kraton going down the hawk shot comes off from Genji has he got it in him to try and chase this one down it doesn't matter because Gamut are gonna take the tower and that dive in by Alex it gave them two more kills yes he died but in the end they're able to pick those up and you just hear the crowd they're loving this and you know Gamut is loving it having the crowd behind him they're gonna go for another turret here and they're gonna pick this up 21 minutes gone it's 22 kills and the gold lead just started to stretch Gamut now it was just 1,000 between them, but quickly, just like that. Two towers down, they managed to get a 3,000 gold lead, and they are 3-1 up in turrets now. There's a big wave on that bottom lane, and we're going to see Genja probably disappearing straight towards there. Let's start looking through the items, Jason. What are we going to start seeing developing here? Apart from the home guard boots on Alex, is charging for that bottom wave. Home guard boots. <laughs> no, so we're going to see... Kerp, he has a Sunfire Cape coming up really soon. It's going to give him that extra bit of health, that extra bit of tankiness. But the thing is, I, I don't know, to me, it's not its not that what's killing him. It's not the attack damage just yet, obviously. Um, it's the magic damage that's coming out, which RNA is already responding to perfectly with his Runic Bulwark only 400 gold away from being completed. We look on the Pharrell Lord, he has his Athenes and Holy Grail. He's going for an Abyssal Scepter as well because he knows he's susceptible to the damage that Gamut's putting out. You look over at Cretan, he doesn't build a tier on his blue build Ezreal, which is like blue-purple, which I don't know what color that makes, if any. <laughs> but he, he, has, he built it a little bit differently. But he has the blade, uh, the Ring King for that extra snap lifesteal that you need when he, when uh, Alexic goes in, and then he can potentially get away as well. And over on the other side, I mean, we have a Nisi Lord Rod picked up for Alex. I'm not 100% sure what that's going to go into just yet. It could go for a DFG if he wants to try to burst Cretan down. It could go for a Zonius, so he gives that extra escape since he's been pretty much taken out of the fight right away in every single team fight. But we do have the, uh, the Mira Mana completed now on Genja. This is going to be really interesting. You said the numbers are really high on on, on blue build Ash. I want to see if that's actually true. We'll well, I mean, obviously it's going to be true if it's numbers, but I want to see it in action. We'll see how it works out. Kerp at the moment, though, he's not been able to split push ever so far because A, he kind of lost out the lane to Darien, and B, the fights are just happening too quick that he's not even got that Sunfire Cape yet. He's not really built any items. He's just trying his best to get some farm, and he's only at 90 CS, 22 minutes in. I mean, actually, it's a relatively low CS game just for everyone, uh, minus Alex, mm. who's at 172. I mean, usually around this 22-minute mark, you see about 180, 200, maybe even 220, maybe 240 if you're frogging, or no, 300 if you're frogging. But they're having a tough time because it's all about team fights. It's not about farming up. It's not about letting you get to a point where you're comfortable with your items to win a team fight straight out. It's, it's about calculating everything perfectly and outplaying each other. And by not letting Kerb split push, which is honestly a very valid point. It's because Gamut, yeah, they're just forcing these fights over and over as we do see Diamond, he's going to catch Jay Ree here. He's going to go for Jay Ree and we're going to see Alex H is going to come in as well. He's going to dive in towards it, finds himself a Pharrell Lord. He's in a little bit of deep trouble here. They're going to turn in. Aaron Air tries to go in. The Shockwave comes out. He popped his ultimate to counter that one. Stand United comes out. True Shot Barrage rattles across. Alex H taken very, very low. Is that crescendo enough? No, it isn't. Jay Ree's also getting taken down. Buzz the defensive ball on him. Pharrell Lord's going to get taken by the Ignite. Diamond in comes on towards him, but look at Kraton. He comes in the backside, takes down one. 
Can he come across? He's going to come back in towards. He doesn't want to get involved in this fight. The cocoon on curve. It's going to be enough to take him down. Creaton just has oh! to run away from this one. The volley shot comes up, and that's going to be Darien diving in towards Creaton. And that was a three for two fight. And again, the aggression from Gambit is proving vital in their success. And look what Alex did yet again. First one in, first one dead, but he gave him so he gave his team a three for two team fight right there. So well played. He's going to be able to pick up an item uh, relatively soon. It looks like Dragon is available right now. But wow, did you see the damage Genjo was putting out with that Mira Mana? It was, it was ridiculous. Are you impressed yet? I, I, I feel bad for people playing solo queue tomorrow, but yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> that was solo queue tonight, I think, is where it's going to start happening. This is the final game of the night, remember? And Blue Buff is going to get starting off. That's going to be given across to Alex, I assume. But will Genjo just take it for himself? He'll be like, nope, I'm having it. It's me. I need it for my Enchanted Chris Laro, and therefore. I am now smart. the key man of the team. Yeah, it's very smart because you know he's going to keep volley spamming. It's like a poke comp minus not really a poke comp where he can just harass you with volley over and over and over. Look at this game, which is honestly, it's been action packed this entire time. One of the few games in LCS where we have more kills than minutes have gone by. But I think honestly, we might have a little bit of a low here. Just a little bit of some farming time, a little bit of time for people to complete some items and really get in here. But wow, I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in favor of Gambit pretty heavily right now. 5,000 gold lead, 25 minutes in. But in, in comparison of, uh, of compositions and what can really happen, I think alternate definitely in this. There's no way they're out at all. They're, you know, they're already 5-0, and oh, but they haven't been able to get a team fight that they've wanted, if, if you know what I mean. Like, they haven't really set up the entire team fight that they wanted to in the correct order. They haven't gotten their, their combo combo off. As you do see Arna going in on Darker here. Shockwave used, but really only onto support. And honestly, there wasn't a great deal to follow that up. That That's, was that was, a, that was an ulti wasted. Yeah, that, exactly. That was a huge mistake. That might be the key for Gap to say, hey, you know, that's down. We could probably engage on you right now. But luckily, at Friendlord, he does have his 40% CDR, as you can see and on his ultimate uh, icon. It's already almost halfway up again. And it looks like I was going to push bottom right now. Gen just following from the side. He was not spotted by a ward here. He might, might be able to pick up a kill on Cretan. They're going to have to land that arrow, and that's what Gen just doing. Look, he's waiting for his time. Stays hidden out of this oh, one. Gonna they might be able to go in. There's going to be the ultimate credit on, followed by the arrow. Just gets stuns up. Does manage to flash away from it, though. Does avoid the damage, but has two ulties used there, and Kraton only used the flash. And I think that was a little bit of mistiming on just the amount of CC they had because they could have locked it down with uh, obviously the, uh, I believe it's the E, no, it's the W out of Lissandra. But still, in the end, I mean, you blew the flash out of Cretan, which is huge for Gambit. I, I, honestly, I think that's probably worth it for them, to, um, considering how quick, you know, the ultimates are going to for Gambit. Getting that flash down, that five-minute cooldown, which has been allowing Cretan to kite away and pretty much prevent himself from dying right away in these fights, is now gone. And that's like Gambit saying, hey, we'll take that. We're going to fight you again very soon, Whoa. and we're going to try to kill you. He's, de he's dead. Oh, no. He dead. <laughs> I don't know where he's going to go. Friendlord actually, Kerp has managed to stop. So they're going to continue pushing this one. The rest of the team, alternate, are pushing trying to, to follow death. up. They're going to try and react to it. They may be pushing to their death. Where are they going to go? The rest of alternate are going to try and close in the gap. And they are pushing in towards the base. Now they're going to see the ward goes down. They may be able to cover off themselves a an escape route here. But Alton, look how split oh, up, though. Aranea, yeah, it is going to be very well split. It's a case of how they deal with this. Oh, no, they've gone on towards Genja. They've caught Genja out here. Can they get the Shadow Dash? The Shockwave pulls him in. If they can take him down, that would be vital. The Ignite comes down. There's the barrier. Alex is going to try and come in. Off the Crescendo goes in there. And now we're going to see he tries to use the ultimate. Pharrell Lord now caught out. Everybody else is split. They need to get Creaton in there. Finally, he's going to join the fight. He's going into Alex Leach, but Alex just turns around, pulls the ultimate down on Creaton's head. Creaton in also into trouble. He gets Alex Leach down, but that's the damage gone. There's no more damage allowed. Genja's going to get tried and taken down. Arane does pick up the kill. Pharrell Lord still getting out of the back of this one. It's a three for two in favor of Genja. In favor of Genja, or technically it is in favor of Genja. It's Gami, the Scarlet, managed to pick it up. They're going to try and repel towards Pharrell Lord. He's going to be out of escape. Oh. oh, flashes out of the cocoon just in the right time. But that was all play created from alternate simply being out of position and Gambit with the wards noticing it. That, that was also uh, Genja just being a boss. Just like, yeah, it's taught me. I'm going to survive you with my life still with Darker healing me on Sona and my uh, my barrier. It was just fantastic play out of them. They come out ahead of, uh, in that entire fight. But Demon, there's something we haven't actually focused on just yet. Look at Diamond Prox's score, 7-0-7 seven, and seven. in every one of these fights. He hasn't been focused and he's been cleaning up kills left and right. More importantly, the KDA is going south of Creaton. He's 6-4-6 six right now. Is that the most deaths he's had in the Abs entirety of LCS? I think that maybe all of them added up together so <laughs> far. But he's definitely been the focus target for Gambit. No doubt about it, his Ezreal is very strong. But you talked about it, Blue Ezreal, if he starts to fall behind, and with six kills, he's still up there, 6-4-6. and six. 
You've got to wonder how far behind is he on Genji now. Genji's not really been playing to play, fight him. It's been Alex that's been on him every time. It's been Alex and Darian, uh, to be honest, because, or, or sorry, not Darian, Diamond, because he's just jumping in right for him. And just, it's pretty much, he doesn't have enough escapes to get ev to get away from every single CC that Gambit has. That, that's the problem he's running into. I mean, obviously the Flash is still down for a while, but there's just so many ways of locking him down, and there's not enough protection on his team to save it. The Nami isn't saving him. And because Gambit isn't grouping up for an Aqua Prison, they're getting hit by the, you know, the Nami Ultimate, but it's not that bad for him. Yeah, it's not working out. And Gambit doing a great job of disengaging away from the main ultimates and then getting straight back in again. Kerb was actually pinging on towards Diamond. They wanted to try and focus on towards him. And they couldn't. And I mentioned it earlier on. Kerb, he's not been able to get his split push going. That's what's created all that fight. He's trying desperately to get across the side, trying desperately to get farm going. But every step of the way, Darian's keeping up with him and, more importantly, has died less, got the items now, and he's starting to become a real problem. And Kerb, he's trying to be that tanky man that goes in, dives onto Genja, and as you just saw in that last fight, hasn't really got anything to deal with him yet. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the really unfortunate part, and it all goes back to, like, something I, I think I said uh, actually last weekend was, I asked teams, like, why do you let Shen through? Like, you know how strong he is, you know how much of a nuisance he is, and they always say, because you know exactly what he's going to do. Like, you know how he's going to play it. There's nothing really wild cardy about him, and you can kind of counter that. And Gambit is showing exactly how. Just by constantly fighting, having, you know, uh, the low cooldowns. Uh, well, Lissandra has low cooldowns, period. But having a you know, blue buff consistent on Genja, so he has multiple arrows up. With Darker, who has a little bit of CDR, not so much with his lock up on Solari. Like, they're forced these fights left and right, and they're not allowing Kerp the time to split push in terms of his ultimate will never be up in time. And that was a fast, fast dragon ride. Now, Ferelnor's actually on the top lane. He's trying to get that one turret down. And that would actually only be the second turret of the game for them. He may be careful that he doesn't get caught out of position, but they don't care. They're going to go straight for the inhibitor. And Darren actually is on the top side. He's pushing that back out. So he's thinking Ferelnor is going to stick there. He's not going to be able to help out here. And this might be a five on four. So this might be what Gambit's actually, or not Gambit, Alton's waiting for. They have the Shen ultimate available. But they do actually engage. Aaron Air comes diving across. Who does he catch on towards? Simply tries to force him away. Kerb did actually get in there. Got the Shadow Dash. There's the Crescendo. Not really doing a great deal. This is all disengaged right now for Gambit. They may be able to get it. The ball delivery system on Kerb. You can see he's on his head. Has got Shockwave still available. Instead, they don't go for it. They did defend off the turret. They took about oh, half no. nipples. Kreton goes aggressive. Oh, Alex is supposed to get on towards him. He dives away from it just at the right time. Now Kerb's in trouble. He's going to get a call out. The Shockwave there. Alex is goes down. Darian's going to be the next focus target. Meanwhile, we do see Kerb at the side they're going down it's a one for one and it's going to be Alex H down but look how low Darian is look how low Darker is but they can't follow it up they can't chase it Kreaton's taking low as well and well everybody backs away this may be the time though the alternate get that middle turret they actually should they should be able to get it easily based on the health that Gambit has and you saw Creed in there he baited that Lissandra ultimate he baited Alex in because he knew if he went in right now he would be able to get out just in time using that flash yet again that thing has been on cooldown more than it's been off cooldown the entirety of this game and just, it was an overall great play because once Alex died, once Cretan escaped, no one was there to kill him and he was there to clean up. Fantastic play there, and that's actually brought Alternate back into this a little bit because now the gold lead is a lot closer. We did just pick up those two turrets, the top and the middle turret. And well, 19-15, the kill score, 32 minutes into this game. A very, very tight matchup between the top of the league, Alternate, at 5-0, and zero, and Gambit, well, they're only at 3-2, and two, I believe they are joint third. And as I mentioned, uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, Gambit, they're just countering an alternate with this extreme aggression. And there's one thing that you have to point out is that alternate is, is the second fastest Baron taker. They've never had, or first Baron taker, they've never had Baron taken from them. Gambit's third, but those are about 25, 28 minutes into the game, and we're already 32 minutes in. So it's pretty much Gambit saying, no, we're not going to fight you over objectives. Forget those. We're just going to fight you head to head, and we're going to win those fights flat out. Well, we know who the crowd wants to win this one. The question is, Will have it? they got it in them? Because <laughs> Alternate have managed to counter the last few fights, and actually, I think it started to give a problem for Gambit. We saw how quick Alex Hitch went down while everybody else focused on Kerp. And Kerp, he's going to get stronger. He's going to get tankier. He's got that Giant's Belt on there. That's probably going to get built into another fat item. Whether he's going to go Warden's Mail maybe to deal with Genja because Genja's becoming a problem as well. He's now got Infinity Edge on. He is going to be doing tons of damage. And just as you mentioned that Kerp, you know, he's only going to get stronger. Genja is going to get only stronger, obviously, but a lot quicker and a lot more. <laughs> I, can't of, I can't think of the word. A he's going to get a more? lot stronger a lot more quickly. He's going to give more. That's all he's going to give. <laughs> um, but because of the items that he's going for, like, uh, Kerp will get tankier, but a Last Whisper will counter that, so it won't matter too much. He's going to be able to do some extreme damage to Pharrell, not to mention Crete and Orge, if they do catch him. 
but with this Oracle picked up by Gambit, it looks like they might potentially want to bait Alternate into a Baron fight, where Gambit does have the advantage of position here. And if you look on the map, Alternate, where are their wards? They are non-existent at this point. And that's why you see Jay Reed's just gone back. He needs to get them wards, and that's what he's done. He tried to pick them up. But honestly, they're not really in a position to try and fight in that middle area. The middle ground that Gambit has full vision over. The Oracle on Diamond Prox is clearing out all of the ball, and they've taken every single little spot of vision away. And they may well start this one off. Genjir actually just plunking a shot off to him. What? Quickly getting healed upon Darker. Who procked it? <laughs> I think Genji did, then he shot, shot okay. as he passed. I was going to say, like, Baron just randomly hitting people. Oh, That's they know where up. they are. Hawk shot comes off. They spot Aranea. He's actually going to go face checking into it. It's Diamond Prox that goes in. Have they got a defense, though? And the ball goes straight in towards Aranea. Runs away from that one. They have got a ward in that bush, and this is going to be a close fight. And look where Kerp is. He's not positioned to get in this fight. Someone's going to die before he gets there. Stand United will be available. It's for Lord that actually got caught there. There's the wave coming back. That's going to wash up, but that is an ultimate burn. Aaron is going to go in for this one. Still not really catching it. Shockwave on towards Alex H, but the damage is not following through. There's going to be the crescendo on towards Aaron Air. Can they get on towards him? Kraton He's going to take him very low. They do manage to get Genja down. Now they're on towards Diamond Prox. He needs to get away from this one. Arcane shifts away. Tries to get away from this one. Jay He's got the Aqua Prison available in just a second. Flashes away from this one. Where are the Ross? Alex, it survived. How the hell did he live? It doesn't matter because Kerb's gone down. And that, so far, is a three for one. And everybody from Alternate has to back away. And Alternate committed every single amount of CC they had for Alex. You saw the 3,000 ELO Shockwave come out, which honestly looked like a med wave, just because it only hit Alex. They wanted to kill him. And he's like, that's cool. I have Zonius. And then Zonius was like, that's cool, I have my ultimate. Like, you cannot kill me. He, he survived the fight, and because of that, you just saw the rest of Gamut just hammering down Alta, killing oh. the Tankist members. And that's going to be a co cocoon landing on Kraton. He's going to be able to get away from this one. Now can shift. He's trying to bait them in a little bit longer here, trying to keep them around. Doesn't want them to go for that Baron, and does manage to get damage down. Wow, this game, this game right now is definitely one to watch. Tell everybody that is not watching, and just wonder why because it is 22-16. High scoring game, 47.8K to 53.9. Still pretty close in the gold, 6,000. When you talk about percentages, it is not above the 10% mark. Very, very close. And we're coming into that point of the game. It is above 10%. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I, I followed you into that. I still believe you, <laughs> even though the numbers prove that Say wrong. Say it convincingly, everybody <laughs> believes you. Exactly. But we're coming up to that point right now, Demon. 36 minutes in, people are hitting level 18. Well, actually, well, there's already quite a few 18s, but people are hitting that point where if you die, you're going to be dead for a while. Alternate, they're going for Dragon here. This will be their second one of the game because they did smite still one earlier. No one in Gambit's in position to stop this, so it should be free for them. But if someone dies, like you're dead for, you know, 50, 40 to 70 seconds, let's say. And that is a lot of time where anything can happen, especially since Gambit already have everything down the middle lane down except the inhibitor turret. So that would be a guaranteed inhibitor. And honestly, most likely a guaranteed win if they do get a clean ace against Alternate here. And for Alternate's side, they've only gotten three turrets the entire of this game. They still have the inner turret to take down, the inhibitor turret to take down. But if they survive with enough members, they have the damage they need to just push through. This, this though, the Gambit normally always on that the moment it spawns the dragon. If they are starting to get a little bit shady on their dragon control with their timers, are they starting to get a little bit flustered here by what Alternate are doing to them? Kerb backing off in that tri bush almost got face checked. It would have been probably safe to get away from that one. The rest of the team are showing themselves in this mid lane, though. And damn it, they really want the Baron now. This is They're trying to bait Alternate into the Baron dance because they know this dance. Yes, they do. I mean, they've done it how many times in the past already? And come back to what you're saying about Dragon, to me, I actually think Gambit, they just don't care about Dragon anymore. Like, the thing is, they're not going to lose because of, a, you know, an extra couple hundred gold. Like, they're not going to lose because of that. What they're going to do is, if they're going to beat you, it's going to be in mechanics. It's going to be just the, the, the facts of how they outplay you in a team fight. And that, you know, thousand gold is not going to really mean much in the end to them. So it looks like they're just trying to, you know, get over towards Baron. Like, you know, you mentioned, like, you know, also they went for Dragon, but that gave Gambit the free control over Baron. Well, that Ironborn Gauntlet, it's starting to do work there. So Darren getting caught out. And now with that on, is that going to be enough for Kraton to kite around? Because he's been the focus every time. Oh, no. Despite the fact he's the focus, you see Kerp, he's been continuing to split push, has got Stan United available. That's the thing, that's why I said oh no to, he's split pushing now. Mm. So Gambit, their aggression, they, they realize it's that point in the game where if we, we can't keep fighting over and over. So we have to, you know, time these fights or calculate these fights perfectly. And Kerp is able to start split pushing, so this might create a big problem for them. He's still only at 160 CS after 38 minutes, and Genja was the one forced to pretty much control him here. Would you need him there? Like, look at his items, he has the damage. 
He's sitting on 2300 gold as well, so he'll have that last whisper when he does go back. And this is this is really going to be intense here, Demon. Is, is he going to go last whisper, or is he going to go for attack speed? He is going for last whisper. Yeah. So, so with Ash, like the old way he used to build her was like an IE last whisper because he didn't need attack speed since yeah. he could kite. So he's not really going to go for that. Not to mention he's blue build anyways. Or green with what's blue and red? Yeah, it's not really blue. It's like blue, red, and yellow. Two, but the ice going to be out and air. Actually, Darian goes in, misses the cocoon out. They thought about turning that around, tried to bait out the aggression from. Alex Itch. While this is all happening, by the way, for Relan Lord, he's continuing to push that top wave. He's going to have to teleport back, but he's in vision of a ward. He has home guard boots, so it's okay. So he'll be back in time and here for the fight if, uh, when they actually do finally get to this turret. It's all about they haven't gotten a perfect combo off just yet against Gambit, and that could be the one thing they need to win these fights. We are going to see potential engage coming in. The turret very low. Aaron Air actually the ultimate use from Alex. Is that may be a mistake. The shockwave oh, no. missed. The shockwave missed from Frello. They're going to spot that. The crescendo though. They only call one person as well. Kraton goes in. It's going to be the standing you know, down giant dash towards him. Will they get the shadow dash across? Everybody backs away from it. And well, you see Gambit. He's looking to try and get in there. It's, it's Gambit. Just one person. It's going to be five people trying to get in there at the moment. But alternate do defend them once again. That inhibitor turret is so, so low right now. And you look at who won out in the end of that fight, and I have to say it's Gamma, even though the alternate's pushing because of their cooldowns. They're, they're a lot quicker for them, so they're going to be able to fight uh, relatively soon, but Kirby's he's going for this. He wants to apply this pressure, and right now, if you look on your main map, Gendra and Alkitsch are nowhere near this, but they might flank him. They might be there on purpose. Well, they may be, but remember, there was a lot of ultimates used there, and it's actually alternate that have got the better ultimates available just right now, which is why they're being more aggressive. You can see Alexich, he's still sticking around in that bottom river. He hasn't gone back yet. He is going to try and flank them like you mentioned. He's going to oh, come no. around the side. It's actually Kraton. He wants to get on towards Kraton. Has been caught a little bit there. Aaron has to go defensive. Oh, They're no. going to go straight in towards Alexic. He's stepping off the oh, side. No. It's one's it going to be. He's just stayed. He's like, where am I going to go? The hawk shot used. That's perfect. And he's just going to back away. He's going to go on towards Kraton. He catches on towards him. Hasn't got the damage though and forces him away. I cannot believe they didn't find Alexic there. Oh my gosh. My heart stopped when I saw that hawk shot coming in. I was like, oh, okay. That's his own team. Whew. They're not going to see him there. But it looks like now they're going to be sitting up at Baron yet again. They still have an Orc on Darker, though he's low on mana at this point. His crescendo is not up just yet. The waves, in terms of lanes, are only pushing towards the top side right now. And look at Darian's items. Like, he knows where the damage is. He has double Negatron cloaks. Baron's being started for Gambit. Edge is going to come in. They're going to spot in here, and... And also, they're going to try to stop this. They Trish have to. Barrage comes across. Aaron Air comes in, gets the fear proc on everyone. Is it going to be enough? Aqua Prison doesn't really land. Aaron Air is going to be the focus target. They want to get rid of that smite. They're trying their best to get rid of it. Kenja does take down for Lord, though. But look at Darian and Darker. They're taking so low. They're having to back away from this one. Diamond Prox, he's been kited. Kraton's trying to get on towards him. They use the wave. They managed to knock him back. But still, Alternate have to back away from this one. It was a one for zero fight, but they're not done yet. They're continuing to chase. Alternate, they unfortunately, I went back and looked at the replay really quickly. Frontlord missed his ultimate. He used it on no one on accident because the ball popped right back to him when we saw Aranea go in. So that might have actually completely turned the fight around. That could have won in the game, unfortunately, like it did. Or not fortunately, fortunately, like it did in the um, Silver Promotion Tournament. But luckily for them, that also had the damage they needed to push Gambit away, and they weren't, didn't allow him to take that Baron. So that mistake is going to be brushed over. And then again, it's not really about the the, nor or the ones you, you hit. It's usually about the ones you miss. Oh, Alex Hitch getting interrupted by Kraton there, actually. Trying to push on towards him, but it is going to be Gambit starting off the Baron this time around. Alternate not really in a position for Unlord is still down. It's going to be a 4v5 if they engage for this fight, but there's still a lot of ultimates. Crescendo is available. We see Aranea once again going in there. Diamond Prox tries to go in towards him. Kraton comes around the side, kiting on towards him. Is Kurt, they're going to dive in towards They may have the damage. Tree Shot Barrage comes back across. Alex Hitch taken very low. They're going to try and turn back on towards him. Sonya's Outgrass comes out. Diamond Prox gets the three talent strike, knocks Aaron Air in the air. He will go down eventually. Oh. No, the Stan United comes out from Kurt while this is all happening just around the back. Pharrell Lord's back and involved as well. Kraton's trying his best to kite on towards him. And they're going to see. Oh, my oh God. he gets the Stan United. Dash on towards him. Shockwave back in there. Kraton goes down eventually, though. And Pharrell Lord, he's got nothing left to do. He's all on cooldowns. He's got no blue buff. He's going to get dropped down. Gambit are going to clean up. Genja manages to pick up the kill. It's now 26 16. This is a bonkers game. And it is going to be Gambit to pick up the Baron. Oh my gosh, everyone is so low at this point. RNA is trying to come in, he's trying to go for a steal here, but honestly, he cannot afford to die. He's just trying to lower them away. Alex is pretty much guarding them, but he has no mana to do anything anyways. Now obviously he has that free spell cast gamut. They're getting the Baron ever so much lower, and RNA is not positioned to get in there. RNA is in no position. Is he going to try it? No, he's not. Alexic, well, he's got no mana. He's going to try and run in, but instead he's too late. He's going to have to use that ultimate to get out. The Ignite takes him down from Alexic. 
full control now for Gambit, and that turns the gold advantage to 8,000 gold, but more importantly, they have four minutes of Baron buff. On all five members, that's the key point right there too. We had also 2,000 gold plus on three different members of Gambit. We see Amarillo Nomicon actually picked up right now for Alex, who has that ridiculous cooldown reduction. And I'm curious to see what the rest of Gambit's gonna pick up here is Genja, he's sitting on 2,400 gold himself, so he actually, I think he's gonna go for a GA. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he kind of needs it. Oh, well, where do we go from this one? Alex H is going to pick up the blue buff. We just saw earlier on blue buff was picked up by Genja in that fight and kind of was needed for Pharrell Lord. He just got that, that fight a little bit too late. And honestly, Creator went a little too deep on the aggression as well, I feel. Maybe, just maybe they should have stepped away from that fight, but it doesn't matter because Gambit, they managed to capitalize on it. And Creaton, we see down the bottom, they just have to keep those waves clear. They have still got the inner turret in the top lane and bottom lane, remember. But it's going to be that middle inhibitor turret that is almost certainly going to be the focus, focus of target. <laughs> focus of target, whatever you'd like to call it. That was all I was aiming for. Oh man, this is starting to remind me of a game of uh, COG Diddy Toss in week number one of NALCS where the fight, it just lasted We're, we're 70, not going to get 72 minutes no, out of this 72 one. Minutes, no but chance. Just constant fighting. And Gambit, five members pushed up with this Baron buff. They have a GA now on Dienja. They have Zonia's already on, on Alexis. They get the first inhibitor turn here. Is Ultra going to defend this? I'm pretty sure they're going to have to give it away. They're going to have to back away from this one. There is a Baron up Gambit. And how many times have we seen Gambit take that first inhibitor and finish the game within two minutes? A lot. Is the yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking like, how many? But it's, it's not very it's not very easy <laughs> to come back against Gambit. You could have just come out with a number. Everyone would have gone, wow, he really it's, knows it's, his stuff. It's actually like 90% of the time that Gambit <laughs> takes for some they'll win against you. This inner turret, I don't think, I honestly don't think Alternate want to defend this one. I don't think they can. They have to try and shove back in towards their base. And how many minutes are left on it? Oh, it's look at that. It's about 80 seconds still on the Baron buff. So there's a long time for Gambit to siege this one out. They're going to try and keep them at bay, but they can tank it up. They've got the minions, and again, you see alternate. They have to step away from this one. Every time this is an advantage, an objective, and gold all going towards Gambit. Thing is, though, they have to defend this inhibitor. Every inhibitor you lose reduces your chances to win that or to come back from the game significantly. So they're going to have to go and fight here relatively soon, and RNA delivering that ball might be the engage. That's going to be Alex. It's going in, but immediately the Zonia's had to be use that they do try and force them away but the shockwave comes out alex is just gonna go down is it enough the turret's still fighting can they get up to the david prox is taken very very low alternate can do it the cocoon comes in though that's gonna be the ball on genja genja just turns around and smacks him in the face with an arrow and that is gonna be genja taking down the turret and alternate quickly turn the pace of the fight it's 29 17 that was a two for one fight but more importantly it was an inheritor for gambit and genja he had something to say about alternate getting back in that fire right there they got out out right away, but unfortunately, Furlord didn't survive that because he can't uh, go up against the damage that Genja has, who's full built right now. I mean, obviously, he can sell his boots for like a Zephyr or something, but in the meantime, Gambit, they're gonna push towards the top side here. Darien's actually over towards uh, the red buff of Alternate. And Gambit, they're backing away. They have 2,000 gold on Genja, they have 2,000 gold on Darien, they have 1,500 gold almost on to, uh, to Darien. Sorry, the yeah, anyways, so they're gonna be back in picking up a couple more items here. And it's at the point where, what else do you pick up? And wow, even Alex Itch went for a GA. Well, he has been the focus target, and he is the man that's been throwing himself in there, so why not? He's kind of, he, actually, to be fair, he was one of the first that always used to have it. <laughs> so we're not really too surprised by that one. But alternate, they're having to clear up the mess that is their base right now, and they have to try and sit this one out for as long as they can. Baron buff will have worn off from Gambit. And honestly, the fights were still very close, but the fact that they have super minions knocking down the middle and the bottom lane is going to cause a problem. We see the blue buff, that's going to get taken away. I think Alex or Genja's going to be having this one. Genja's coming into focus, so he will be taking that one away. And it's a matter of time before Gambit just bide it. And they're probably going to follow in the super minions. They're going to take right. this top inner turret first, though. But you hit, you hit the nail on the head, though, that Ultimate is still having a chance in these fights. And this is going to be it. This is going to be the final fight. Well, the final fight if Gambit wins on this inhibitor turret. Because they cannot let this one go, period. They have to engage before the Supermans get on those Nexus turrets or they're going to lose. And Gambit, all they have to do is disengage and then rinse and repeat. Just do some extra turret, back away. So if anything, we're going to see that ball delivery system coming in really simply soon. And Frontlord, he actually picked up a Void Staff. So he's ready for this. They're going all out in this last fight. They're trying to vent this turret as much as they can. And with the blue buff Ezreal, it's really helping out. Gambit, they're just buying their time. They're not even trying to uh, take this turret down. 
Oh, the Shockwave was used. It only caught Darian, and that's surely going to be the trigger to go for Gambit. They do manage to poke them back. It was Gendry he wanted, but that Shockwave is down, and it's going to be down for at, at least damage. 80, 70 seconds of Frenlord. He's that just going to have to run back to base. That was two volleys that took him down to half health. That is ridiculous. And incoming solo queue, blue build Ash, but here they go. They're going to go for some hit return. They're going to dive in towards it. It's Diamond Prox once again starting the charge. They get the knock up. There's the wave coming through. It caught absolutely no one. True Shot Barrage comes in. Alex H jumps up towards Frenlord. The arrow comes out from Kenja. The crescendo comes out from Darker. The dive comes out from the audacious charge of Diamond Prox. They're going to go on towards Kraton. The Fang sinking in. Kerbs using his ultimate, but it's not going to be enough. And Genja manages to take down one Texas to it. He'll take down the second Nexus to it. And just like that, Gambit in Mother Russia pick up the first win of the week. And it's going to be, more importantly, a big defeat for Alternate, who do not go the perfect score and end the week 5-1. We'll see how they can do tomorrow, but instantly that winning streak is broken. And just listen to that crowd, Demon. They're cheering, they've been cheering Gambit for a good portion of this game, but so well deserved. I mean, Alternate, they played fantastic the entire game, but that unmatched aggression that came out of Gambit, that is a scary thing to see. That's something you wake up some morning to sweating, just like, oh man, I don't want to see it ever again. But 